Continuing my Nazi zombie minithon, let's talk about Overlord. Let me first take a moment to appreciate the poster artwork. There are different versions of the theatrical poster, as there usually are, but I really appreciate the individual artwork of each of these posters. In this, we meet allied paratroopers who are on a mission in which they discover something horrific. The CGI for the flight sequence is pretty solid, and I don't say that often, but seeing as this was released in IMAX, it makes sense that they would make sure that it would look good. We get to know their personalities through their conversations with each other. They are each war movie archetypes, but their dialogue is written in a way that's more entertaining than anything. You end up at least halfway caring about this group of soldiers, if not rooting for them. I like that one character knew French because of his grandmother, then connected that to both Haiti and Louisiana. Some of you already know that my mother's family is from New Orleans, Louisiana. My great-grandmother used to only speak to me in French until I was about six years old. My grandmother's grade school in New Orleans was taught in French, and her generation was the first to learn English, and she learned it about high school age. So that was very cool to add to his character. The troop encounters a woman who ends up helping them. I like that she wasn't the generic damsel in distress. I hate that type of writing. When to make a woman freak out and scream and cry, sitting right next to a weapon, that's that ish I don't like. So thank you for writing her character well. She was resourceful and she fought alongside the soldiers when she had to. She also had a little brother who looked to be about four or five years old that she was taking care of. Something happens that causes the men to be separated and our main protagonist ends up alone behind enemy lines on a reconnaissance mission. This is where he finds the underground facility and do I even need to finish that sentence by this point? We know what the plot's going to be. It's literally the same basic idea as the last two movies I just spoke about, except with a bigger budget. The writing is more interesting in this than in the last two movies. The dialogue is better and the characters have more individuality. I really like the casting. Yes, there were segregated troops during that time period, but do you really think after they landed behind enemy lines, they were like, I need to stay with my all white or all black troop? When the bullets and bombs are flying, I'm sure nobody had time for US's segregationist BS. Plus, where'd they put the Latinos, Native Americans, Asian troops, who also served in both world wars? I actually Googled that. They had segregated Chinese platoons, and they even had an all Puerto Rican platoon. But like I said, this could have been done in boot camp, but once you're on the battlefield and the bullets are flying, nobody's got time for that crap. There is a way they could have sidestepped this criticism. They could have had two sets of troops, showed their segregation on the planes, but then once they parachuted down, the two troops mixed together. That would have deaded that criticism. But seriously, if you're nitpicking realism in a movie about Nazi zombie ghoul creature things, you're paying attention to the wrong things. For our purposes here today in the 21st century, it doesn't matter. If it bothers you to see a mixed group of World War II soldiers, number one, I doubt you should be watching me. Number two, Google the word fiction. And number three, get some real problems in life because this is not one. I live in a country where we've had a whole lot of messed up BS going on and I'm trying to forget about that and enjoy a fun horror film. So let's do that. Let's talk about some cool gore effects. One last thing about character development before I do that though. At one point the soldiers discuss the choice between sticking to their mission of taking out the tower or saving the person that's in danger first. I could see both soldiers point of view. Neither soldier is presented as the bad guy, just two differing points of view. They make a decision and still have to deal with some messed up stuff. Now back to the gore. It was pretty cool. That scene with the soldier in the attic. Wow. 
it looks like they use both practical and CGI effects together to get this final result. The director has said they tried to do as much as they could with practical effects. They did a lot with prosthetics and then it looks like they used CGI to augment some of the movement. I think they did go a little bit overboard with some of the CGI done to one of the characters faces at one point. When you could just see the practical effects it looked brilliant but when they used CGI to have the character express facial gestures it looked too slick for my taste. If you got to see Overlord let me know in the comments what you thought about the effects. I think I spotted some horror homages. There was a scene with a flamethrower that might have been a nod to the thing. Also one of the actors in this is Kurt Russell's son so that but incidentally he's not the person with the flamethrower. That probably would have been too on the nose. There's a meat hook scene that kind of reminded me of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Did you guys pick up on any others? Let me know in the comments about that as well. Wouldn't it be weird if every time I asked a question I would just pause and stare at you like Dora the Explorer like this? In Frankenstein's Army we got first person shooter visuals. In Trench 11 we got in-game cutscene dialogue. But in Overlord we get a boss fight. The action sequence were pretty good. Not much shaky cam. And the gunfights and explosions almost reminded me of how First Blood was shot. With a runtime of almost two hours, it never feels overly long or boring at any point. There's a full orchestral score for this movie and it's really good. I really enjoyed this and I wish I had gotten to see this in 4D, but those tickets are $28. Plus I'd have to drive all the way over to International Drive. And that's way across town because that's the closest 4D theater. I mean, there's a theater on Colonial that says they're 4D, but they're not really 100% 4D. The seats don't have a full range of motion and they just have Dolby speakers in the chairs that make it shake. Whereas the theater on I Drive has the full motion chairs and the wind blowing and it makes it snow in the theater and rain and all that cool stuff. Have it shoot fog at you during foggy scenes or hot air when they show fire. It's a whole experience. I just wish it cost less like 15 or 20 dollars because at almost 30 dollars just for the ticket then you have to pay to park and if you didn't sneak your food in then you're going to pay for concessions. You're looking at 50 60 dollars for one person. Anyway I just wish it cost less like 15 20 dollars. I say all that just to say that this would have been a great time at the movie theater. I watched this on Amazon Prime and Surround Sound and it sounded great. And before you say it in the comments yes I considered reviewing Dead Snow and Dead Snow 2 Red vs. Dead. I've seen both movies. I do have to rewatch them. I will review them eventually. This was such a good watch. I actually watched it three times and it was enjoyable to me each time that I watched it. With that said, I'll be back in a moment to talk to you about Nazi Overlord. Let's talk about Nazi Overlord. Not to be confused with Blumhouse's Overlord. Actually, let's talk about the Asylum first. Asylum is a production company whose whole marketing plan is based off of my 70-year-old father thinking that he's rented the movie that he saw the trailer for. The script is usually trash, the acting is usually trash, and the whole production staff is paid in trident layers and bus passes. That's all right, because we're not here for Oscar-worthy masterpieces. We're here for fun. We're here for bad action sequences, with the kind of special effects that a middle schooler can make on their cell phone. Oh, and the obvious concept ripoff. Which reminds me, one of these days I need to review Atlantic Rim, not to be confused with Pacific Rim. Anyways, this movie stars a bunch of unknowns with a cameo from Tom Sizemore. Tom Sizemore is the Eric Roberts of Michael Madsen's. This group of soldiers has to go on a mission to rescue a British doctor from Nazis who are forcing her to do experiments. The outside scenes look like they were filmed at your local park. The Nazi's lab just looked like a cool old house but the basement looked like an industrial boiler room. I was so bored during the first half of this that I started reading tweets about Dr. Pimple Popper. It was the episode with the guy that had the lipoma boob on the back of his neck and the military veteran that had ichthyosis on his feet and a lady who had a foot growing out of her head. It wasn't really a foot but it looked like a foot. And as usual Dr. Lee hooked them all up Anyway, the story in this movie doesn't pick back up until they get to the doctor's lab, which looked a little too modern for the supposed time period, especially those morgue doors. But the excitement only lasts for a moment because then it gets boring again. 
I have no idea what the doctor's doing. She's got some guys caged up. She gives one guy some water and then puts him in a cage with some insects that attack him. Then she collects one of the insects that attacked him. She puts another dude in the same cage and then he eats an insect and explodes. The dialogue suggests that she's trying to create a plague. I look down at my phone for a moment and then when I look back up, the doctor was in a chamber with one of the soldiers, naked, and then he exploded. She's all jazzed because apparently she's immune to the virus. And so then she starts to tell everyone her plan. As the other soldiers try to attack her, she unleashes some soldiers that she had that she had turned into zombies. I'm not disappointed because this is stupid. I'm disappointed because it's boring. For example, in Frankenhooker, a man loses his girlfriend to a freak lawnmower accident and he tries to bring her back to life. He does this by acquiring the body parts of some prostitutes that he lured with super crack. He had a good knowledge of chemistry, so he took some crack and made it into super crack. The super crack was too potent, so the prostitutes exploded. And he just took his favorite body parts from the prostitutes and tried to remake his girlfriend. But since she was mostly hooker parts, when she was reanimated, she had hooker tendencies. Now that's stupid, but damn if it ain't entertaining. This was not bad enough to be so bad that it's good. It's just plain bad and boring. The effects in this are only slightly better than Birdemic shock and terror. That's a real film that happened. The ending of this is hot buttered trash garbage. I personally would not tell you to waste your time on this. But like I always say, watch for yourself. Just because I love something doesn't mean you won't hate it. Just because I hate something doesn't mean you won't love it. Have you seen Overlord or the Asylum ripoff Nazi Overlord? <laughs> or any other Asylum ripoff movie? As a matter of fact, write in the comments your favorite Asylum ripoff movie. And that's all I got today. <laughs> Bye.